Hi there, I'm Rick Schultz from Virtual Dynamics, and I wanted to take some time to you today to talk with you about loudspeakers, it's something that you can do that will cost almost no investment of money on just a little bit of investment of your time. I've done it on speakers starting at about uh, $500 a pair, all the way up to $45,000 a pair. Um, no problem at all. It always has a really tremendous impact. So what we're going to do actually, is, and, and the, what we're talking about is actually taking the original screws that hold the drivers in, and you can see right here that the screw is uh, holding this driver in. I'm just going to zap that out of there. And this screw, these screws are almost always steel. Um, it's very uh, uncommon to see anything used besides steel in these screws. The, the problem with them is that they resonate and the high frequency energy that builds up on drivers really doesn't get a chance to get away. And even on low frequency drivers, as you change out these uh, screws on the drivers, you're going to find that they move much faster. And you can take something like a subwoofer, uh, do this little trick with the screws, and I've heard improvements that I thought maybe doubled the sound quality of a loudspeaker. You, you want to be looking for a, a, an exact replica, if you could, um, in, a, in a brass screw. That's sometimes very hard to find, but you'll notice on this one we have a, a, a wood screw type thread on it, and um, typically on a brass screw um, you, you want to have, you're going you're to find some sort of a different head. Often they're going to be a slotted head, which that's fine. You can put that in there. It's going to look real great too, by the way. It usually accents the drivers and looks uh, really fancy. Um, if you get a, an opportunity to look at the bottom of this, you can see that it's flush on the bottom. And what that flushness does is, because it's flush on the bottom, it's going to grab more of the driver area itself and pull that in. So when I look for a screw, I usually find something that um, you don't want it too big to fit in, like this screw head won't actually fit in there, so it's not going to uh, fit appropriately, but something a little bit smaller like that, so it fits in and grabs lots of the driver as it's doing it, so you want even a, a, a wider uh, head here than, than the original one, if you can find that, and then you want to go with the original thread. <clears throat> Another tool that I think every audiophile has to have um, is this little guy here called the Wheeler Fat Wrench. And uh, I use this actually for uh, high-end uh, gunsmithing. Just helps uh, to be able to get the right amount of pressure. And this thing, you can set it anywhere between about five inch pounds and about uh, 70 inch pounds, which is way, way too much for an application like this. We're gonna be talking under 10 inch pounds for this. As you do this, one of the most important things that you can do as you're um, replacing your screws is get the amount of torque of each, each screw to be as identical as possible. So as I turn this screw in, you see that I only turn to a certain degree until my uh, fat wrench um, stops for me. That's because I've been set right now at about eight inch pounds. And then you'll want to put another brass screw in there. Once that one's done, pull your next screw, put another brass screw in. So when you get to, to putting all of your screws in, take each one of them and make sure that the torque is set to the same, that, that one of them is not tighter than the other. <clears throat> If one of them's a little tighter than the other, you're going to find that it'll actually affect your sound. It can pull your sound stage off to the left or to the right. This is also really important when matching your left and right speaker. If you've got it set at about nine inch pounds on one, you want it set for the other for nine inch pounds on the other. You can increase the amount of torque. As you do, you're going to get a cleaner and clearer sound, and it's pretty dramatic. Um, in fact, you can also use this to be able to match the tone or the sound of each one of these drivers to the next one. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing uh, little thing to do, and, and for speaker designers, if you've never done something like this before, um, you'll find that uh, a tool like this to be able to help you in working with your uh, speakers and in, in being able to um, work with something like this, it can you can take something where you've got a, a tweeter that's just a little bit bright or a little bit prominent or a little bit forward uh, and doesn't seem to be integrating perfectly with the mid-range. In 98% in of the cases, all you have to do is tighten up the, the brass screw on that particular uh, driver, just a tad. You know, add maybe a one inch pound at a time to each one of the brass screws. And of course, doing that on both speakers back and forth. So as I was to increase the total amount of torque on the screw that goes into the tweeter unit itself, that's going to calm the tweeter unit down, make it faster and a little bit uh, less fatiguing. You don't want to over tighten because eventually you'll break your brass screw. 
I'm not going to be responsible for that one. <laughs> You're going to have fun getting it out. So this is a, a tweak you just simply have to try. Um, everybody that I know that's tried it so far would just simply never go back to the original way of listening to their loudspeaker with the, 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 the steel screws. Um, really, you're just going to find that uh, the only thing they're good for, put them in a pla uh, plastic bag, because if somebody that doesn't know about this, they're probably going to want the original screws in there. You can throw them back in afterwards. And, uh, but you will probably never use the original steel screws in a speaker again. So enjoy that. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us, www.virtualdynamics.ca, and I'm Rick Schultz. Thanks.